bunch of belts. To do it, she'll need to best her most accomplished opponent to date, Hannah Gabriels, the current unified 154 pound champion. Gabriels moves up in weight for titles in a third division. My partner Steve Farr had an opportunity to talk with both champions earlier tonight. Hannah Gabriels, you're moving up in weight. Clarissa's <laughs> coming down. I know you've been asked this question a lot, but how will weight impact this fight? Um, we don't know until I feel her, right? Um, but uh, really and truly, I believe that um, when you learn to um, to do other things, um, the power and all of that, you know, it plays it plays something, but not everything. So I feel very confident about my job and all that we've been working on, and we'll see. I just we'll hope see. that you enjoy it a lot. When you when somebody asked you how are you going to fight Clarissa, you said definitely not the way all the other women have fought her. <laughs> yeah. So what is your plan going to be? No, I'm just going to be technical aggressive. There's no way you can win to Clarissa being passive or being, you know, uh, expecting to catch her because she's very fast and she has so much stamina and is so um, aggressive that you know, you got you got to step up to the game uh, just like as aggressive as she is. So. I'm just um, very excited because I haven't been that aggressive in a while. And so I'm just um, excited to see how this will work out. We're excited too. Good luck, Hannah. Thank you so much. Clarissa Shields, I saw the look on your face yesterday when they announced the weight. You were like, whew. Yeah. You were relieved. So how is weight going to play a factor in this fight? I don't think it is. She, she's coming up. I'm going down. We're meeting right in the middle. So, um, and if she walks around at 175, I'll walk around about 180. I think we're both coming down, and it should be a good fight. You have said that Hannah Gabriels is, on paper, or off paper, the best fighter you've fought so far. Mm -hmm. What kind of fighter are you expecting? Um, I expect her to use her gifts, use her legs. Um, hopefully she has some heart today and not, and not try to run and prove to me that I'm not the greatest woman of all time tonight. But um, I'm here to prove the exact opposite, that I am the greatest woman of all time, and that... Um, you know, I'm a different fighter than any fighter she's ever fought. You know, out of her 18 wins and all her knockouts, I'm not any of those girls. I'm a totally different animal. The guy who's taping your hands right now, one of the top trainers in boxing, John David Jackson, yeah. it's your first fight with him. What will we see a little bit different? Um, um, I'm going to use my skills a lot more. I'm not going to be so aggressive. I'm going to take my time, use my jab. And he told me some new combinations, so hopefully I use them. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that's a good luck. Thank you. And back here at the Detroit Masonic Auditorium, Steve Farhood has rejoined me here. And Steve, we've now watched Clarissa Shields. We've seen her in three of her five previous fights. This will be the fourth one tonight. And I think, quite frankly, we've seen some opponents who, before a punch was even thrown, were all done dancing. I do not get that sense <laughs> with her opponent tonight. I don't believe Hannah Gabriels is awed at all. Not at all. One thing I do notice, Barry, you know, attitude is so important with fighters. Hannah Gabriels has been very deferential to Clarissa Shields, where Clarissa says, you know, I want to, if I can kick butt, everything else will be fine. So I use the word arrogance as a compliment. I see it slightly in Christina Hammer, and I definitely see it in Clarissa Shields. It's an attitude like I'm just not going to be beaten. And uh, we'll see if attitude translates into what happens inside the ring. Yeah, I think one thing is fairly certain, and that is we're going to see a fight break out here in Detroit. To that end, here again is Raul Marquez. And let me just put it to you this way. How do you see this thing playing out? What's going to happen here? Well, Barry Shields is naturally the bigger fighter. She needs to use her physical strength to out-muscle her and just break her down and kind of work on sitting down more on her power shots to try to get a knockout. We haven't seen a knockout from Clarissa and hope that the weight drop doesn't affect her stamina and power. Now, for Gabriel, she can't afford to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. She's got to move in and out, use her lateral movement, her speed, and just be smart in there, know when to engage, and take her into the later rounds. This is a very intriguing fight between two established world champions that are testing their bodies. It's just a matter of who could adapt to the new conditions tonight, Barry. And the one thing, of course, and Steve mentioned this, and that is the fact that Clarissa Shields with a new trainer this time around, and we'll see what effect, if any, that has. Should be a very entertaining fight, though. It is our main event of the evening, Hannah Gabriels and Clarissa Shields. 35-year-old Hannah Gabriels, she'll be making her American debut tonight, having fought 14 of her 20 fights in her native Costa Rica. 
and the rest in either the Caribbean or South America. The 11 year pro won the WBO welterweight title back in December 2009. Then she moved up in weight and won the WBO junior middleweight title in May of 2010. She made three successful defenses of that 154 pound title before losing it in February of 2013. Gabriels regained the title in December of 14 and has defended it five times. She added the WBA version in June of 16. She comes off a unanimous decision win over Oxandia Castillo, who four years earlier had given Gabriels her only defeat as a pro. Tonight, trying to win titles in the third division against a naturally bigger opponent and in a hostile territory. Steve, give us the keys to victory for Hannah Gabriels. Well, Barry, we start with score and move. Gabriels doesn't need a slugfest. If she can punch without getting countered, she'll avoid one. Slip the jab. In her two fights with Oxandia Castillo, Gabriels was hit way too often by the jab. She has to improve that part of her defense. And counter, don't leave. If she can get Shields to punch first, Gabriels has a better chance of landing her own power shots. And you hear the crowd begin to react to one of their own. Clarissa Shields seems to be the whole package and a home run here in her native Detroit or from just up the road in Flint, Michigan. The winner of two Olympic gold medals, she turned pro a year and a half ago at just 23 years of age. Already, she holds two super middleweight championship belts. Tonight, she performs for the first time, as we said, under the tutelage of trainer John David Jackson, who has worked more in Shields becoming a better and more selective puncher. She wants to be the greatest female fighter of all time. And tonight, she'll try and take another step in that direction, dropping down in weight to fight the most decorated fighter in her young career. Steve, once again, give us the keys to victory for Clarissa Shields. Well, Barry, one of the keys is going to be this crowd. But otherwise, cut off the ring. Gabriels is going to try to move in and out. Shields needs to keep her in punching range at all times. Pick her punches. By carefully choosing and placing her power shots, Shields will have a better chance of hurting Gabriels. And go to the body. A body attack is the best way for Shields to make the most of her size advantage. All right, with that, it is main event time. Unified Super Middleweight Champion Clarissa Shields against Unified Junior Middleweight Champion Hannah Gabriels for the vacant WBA and IBF Female Middleweight Championships. With that, we once again go to the center of the ring and our ring announcer, Pete Trevino. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the historic Masonic Temple here in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, where tonight's fights are being brought to you by Salida Promotions and Showtime. Tonight's sponsors are Greek Town Hotel and Casino, Superior Buick Cadillac GMC, Anita Active, Five Hour Energy, and Hotel St. Regis, Detroit. This matchup has been sanctioned by the State of Michigan Unarmed Combat Commission. Commission members in attendance tonight are Scott Affolter, Bob Howe, Cheyenne Burning, Sheila Howe, Todd Skinner, and Kevin McMillian. Introducing the judges as appointed, Michael Ancona, Jeremy Hayes, and Pasquale Procopio. Your referee in charge of keeping the fight clean, fair, and exciting is Gerard White. And now, boxing fans, it's time to throw down. This contest is your main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA and IBF female middleweight championships. Presenting first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks trimmed in white. Standing five feet, seven inches tall, she weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. She brings with her to the ring a record of 18 wins, one loss, and one draw, with 11 of those victories coming by way of knockout. 
fighting out of and representing Alahuela by way of Tabarcia de Mora San Jose, Costa Rica. Here is the former WBO female welterweight and current WBO female junior middleweight champion of the world, Hannah La Amazona Gabriels. Her opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the maroon trunks trimmed in gold. Standing five feet, eight inches tall, she weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. She comes to the ring undefeated with a record of five wins and no losses, with two of those victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of and representing Flint, Michigan, here is the two-time Olympic gold medalist and the current IBF and WBC female super middleweight champion of the world, Clarissa T. Rex Shields. <laughs> Referee Gerard White with final fight instruction. Two seconds only, two seconds only. Ladies, we're going to rules in the dressing room. I expect a spirited, passionate event, okay? The trunks here are a little high. We're going to let it work here and up. They're a little high here. We'll let it work to the middle and up. Keep your punches in front. Keep it fair. Keep it clean. Touch them up. Let's go to work, ladies. And we take a look at the numbers for these two. In her most recent fight, Shields scaled 167. In her most recent fight, Gabriel's scaled 154. Gabriel's naturally smaller, but the good news for her, she has a reach that's equal to Shields. The unified rules are in effect here. No standing eight, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The fight is official after four rounds. And remember, women's boxing, these are two minute rounds. So here we go, 10 rounds for two belts. You can see Gabriel's very aggressive right out of the box. Yeah, she got counted pretty yeah, sweetly did. there. Yes, she did. I'm dropping her hands. Yep. That's probably not a good idea. Not at all. Shields very obliging and will just hit her multiple times if she comes in like that. Exactly. You have to stay calm in the heat in the moment. And right now, Shields is very, very calm, very composed after a butt there. Yeah, I think they bang head. Shields a combination again. Some big bombs being thrown by also, Shields. Well, and Gabriels is right Gables. there for them. Uppercut and down goes Shields. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Stop. It was an uppercut that put her down. We've talked about Shields never having to overcome adversity in the ring. Here we are. And now what Gabriel's stop, asked stop. to avoid is stop. being Mouthpiece. too careless here, Mouthpiece. being too confident. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece has been out since the knockdown. Pop it in, no coaching. Pop it in, pop it in, mouthpiece. Mouthpiece is in the ring. The referee does not see it. Box! Get that mouthpiece. Well, that made it, giving him chills a couple of minutes to, I mean, a yeah. couple of seconds to tear her head. Yes. Well, I'll say an action first round. Yes, thanks to Hannah Gabriel. I'm on the table here, not there. Take your time and relax, okay? Let me get it. One behind. I got it. 
too anxious. Take your time. Work the jab. Cut the ring off and go to the body. Do those things, okay? She kind of, she's trying to suck you in. She's here, bouncing. Put that jab downstairs and upstairs. Don't look for that long right hand. Step in with that short right hand we talked about. Step in. First knockdown of the rest of Shields' career was a right yeah, uppercut. The left hook was dressing. It may have knocked her out uh, over, but the right uppercut clearly was the punch with the left hook that hurt Shields. And there she watches as she goes down. She watches her mouthpiece come out of her mouth and go across the ring. I would say that's quite an unexpected moment. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I think she was very shocked. She was very surprised, but I think she took it pretty well, got I, back I, up, and, I, and didn't swing wild, took her time. I was going to say, I, I don't think she was really hurt by it. She was certainly stunned. But for the first time in her career, Clarissa Shields, as a pro at least, is behind 10-8 on the card. Exactly. And maybe trying a little too hard here. John David Jackson said, take it easy in the corner. You know, it's funny, when Gabriel's got countered in the first round, they said, yeah, she's going to back off a little bit. She's going to calm down. Well, she didn't. And her game plan is exactly what she told me in the dressing room before. Aggressiveness. She wants to try to overwhelm okay, Clarissa head, Shields. That's, head, that's, that's it worked in the first round. Box, you know that headbutt in the first round, too, there's a swelling on the left cheek of Gabriel's. And that was from the headbutt. Yeah, she has high cheekbones to begin with. Good left hand from Shields. Five punches unanswered, and Gabriels comes back with one of her own. I think she's got, got some pop. Yeah, I think she's got rocked again. Yeah, Shields can't afford to flail away in these combinations, even though she's controlling them. I think that time Shields got Gabriels' attention. What got Heck of a that fight so far, there. I'll what say that. that. I think we've all waited for the time as a professional where Clarissa Shields would be tested. It's awfully early in this fight, but she's being tested by somebody who's a champion and fighting like a woman who's determined and thinks she can win. And, and to some extent, it's kind of matching with the speed, you know, because she's able to hit her. Again, an action second round. There's the great Tommy Hearns. Absolutely Detroit royalty. Now a promoter. Yes. There's a show here with Jackie Callum tomorrow night. And Thomas Hearns wasn't necessarily the best fighter of the 80s, Barry, but he was the most exciting fighter of the 80s. He was about the most exciting round of boxing I've ever seen. And I had the pleasure of calling. Okay. Clarissa Shields can throw a lot of punches at one time, and here she goes. The left hook drives back Gabriel's, and then Shields keeps firing both hands. But after those first two missed, with a lot. Yeah, and she has to be careful that, you know, now that she's fighting a, an opponent who can hit her and hurt her, apparently, she has to be careful not to leave herself open in those exchanges. Shields. That swelling is getting worse. Good body shot from Gabriels. Gabriels now uh, more intent on picking her spots, I think. Huh? Looks like it, huh? Got Clarissa now is trying to trying to find her now. Found her there with that overhand right. But Gabriel's had an answer, and there's another right hand from Shields and two body shots from Gabriel's. Shields being a little more patient as well here. Three jams all missed. I'll tell you what, Gabriel's he's got that herky jerky style, you know, a lot of bouncing her and stop, good stop. speed. Get back, box. Get that classic from me, buddy. I think Shields is, is, is finding her distance now with the jab. 
Can't, can't get lazy in there. Got to keep your hands up. Well, we talked about Clarissa Shields needing to cut the ring off. I don't think really that's relevant right now because Gabriels is not showing that much lateral movement, more forward movement. Shields trying to suck her in here. Gabriels misses. And a good job by Gabriels. Got in with the left hand, got out. Exactly. That's a veteran move. Close round. Still feel like Shields is trying to load up with every shot. That was the round. You give her too much time. See, she's trying to, she's trying to shuck her, drive her way through it now. Because she felt the power. That was a good body shot you threw early. Give you a chance. Go back to the body corner. That's going to set that right hand up for you. But do me a favor. When you find that right hand, come back with the hook. The rest of Shields will move her hands. Been averaging 60 something punches a round in a two minute round that projects to almost 100 for a three minute round. This is the same replay, and you see that Gabriel sort of rode with that right hand a little bit, but it still landed flush, and uh, I gave Shields the round. Yeah, it's interesting. I gave it to Gabriel's, but I, I believe it was a very close round. I gave it to Shields, and I got the fight even. Round four. You know, this more measured pace is what I've seen on tape of Gabriel. So she's just getting hit with left hooks there. But this is more how she usually fights as opposed to what she did in round one. Right hand from Shields there over the top. Bring that one up. I agree with you, Raul. I think as we look at your scorecard here, you've got an even fight right now with a 10 8 first round. I'm going to say, Raul, I agree with you that Shields still has a tendency to load up with every shot. Yeah, she's uh, get, you know, she gets over anxious, you know, so they got to go back to the corner and John David Jackson kind of settles her down to take your time. Take your time. Pop that jab out there. Find the right distance. Don't load up with every shot. And Gabriel's is still there. And still has some pop. Stop! Step back. Step back. But guys, you know that anytime you score a knockdown, especially an unexpected knockdown in round one, that can have a negative effect as well. Because you start looking for the one shot, maybe the same shot, and it takes you out of your game plan. I'm I not agree. suggesting that's necessarily the case, no. but mentally it might be. I, I agree. It, it, it had to ruin her mentally because she came in here, you know, with a big crowd, very confident. She thinks she's going to dominate. I know she didn't expect to get dropped in the first round, so no. she's got to mess with her head. Yeah, a, a first round knockdown like that can <laughs> that mess wasn't, with both their heads. Yeah. That wasn't in plans. That wasn't in the, in the game plan. I mean, that wasn't in her plan to get dropped. I agree with what you're yeah. saying about Gabriel's too, Dusty. Well, Gabriel's work rate right now, way down. Way down. What happened? What happened? Breathe. I got it. Open your mouth a little bit. Tranquila. Espera, yo me Abajo primero. La recta. Go to the body first, the, the lead. Ya sube, su estamina. No nos suelte abajo. No hay nada de intercambio. Ok, se puede. Está haciendo mucho abajo. You can do it, come on, you can do it. This is round five. They want Gabriel's to work the body first. You know, Barry, I talked about star power for these women we're seeing tonight. Costa Rica's never had a male world champion 
She's Gabriel's the only female world champion they've ever had. This fight is on live in Costa Rica right now, and you can imagine the whole country's watching. Absolutely. Not just the World Cup, you know. <laughs> and the soccer team lost. So. Different fight, as you said now, from Gabriel's up on her bike. Yeah, now Shields needs to cut off the ring because she's getting a lot of lateral movement from Gabriel's. I wonder if Gabriel's didn't blow a lot of energy in that first round. Very likely. I mean, I know she's used to fighting long fights. She's a champion, but she hasn't really been the same since that first Good round. Good right hand by Shields and another left hand by Shields. And a big right hand by Shields, although Gabriel's ruled with that. Maybe that's a wake-up call for Gabriels, too, who all of a sudden throws a three-punch combination. Yeah, Gabriels is being reduced to someone who's looking for that one punch. And, you know, she is a smaller fighter, and they're used to fighting at 154. Larissa's coming down from 168. She's definitely bigger, so maybe her just the body weight is wearing Gabriels down. Gabriel's breathing through the mouth now as well. Floressa Shields historically fights with her mouth open. Yeah, Shields now, you can sense starting to take control. Gabriel's holding. It's halftime of this fight, and because of what happened in round one, Shields has dominated most of the rest of the action, but isn't up very much on the cards. You see her jabs, a four jab advantage, and the power shot's only 11 power shot advantage. So not a big edge, but here is the story of the fight, early at least. Watch the uh, right hand, right uppercut, right there hurt Shields, and follow up left hook put her down. That puts Shields two points down on the cards. Now she's made that up, at least on my card, with furious combination punching, just like this. And as the rounds have mounted, we've seen Shields continuing with the flurries, and Gabriel's only doing it in spots. And now Shields is the aggressor. Gabriel's buying time with lateral movement. This is round six. Gabrielle's had her lowest punch output in round five. Yeah, she is breathing through her mouth now. Wild right hand. Shields. Stop! Stop! Get back. Get back. Shields is still one of the things John David Jackson told us he was doing, trying to do with Shields is get her to set down on her punches. And she still seems a little wild to me, but again, yeah, it's only one fight. Yeah, at times she does. Stop. Back. Shields throwing more, landing more. Maybe not equaling the volume we've seen in the past, but she's taking control of this fight. Very definitely. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Every shot there, she's loading up. She's got to... Pick her shots, speed. right? Yeah. Pick her shots. Pick more her shots, pace her shots, touch, touch, then the power shot. And that's what John David Jackson, our new trainer, has been stressing. Right. Those two jabs of the right hand. Went to the bottom, nice. came up with the left hand. Nice combination. Keep in mind, Clarissa Shields never scored a knockdown as a pro. And Clarissa breathing through her mouth also here. Yeah. That still seems the stronger than two. Really, no reason for Shields to be fighting off the ropes. A little overhand right by Gabriels. And that was a good shot. Straight right hand from Shields. And that brings the crowd alive here. And Shields trying to finish with a flourish at the bell.
Gabriel's came to life a little bit in round six. He has shields on the ropes, let, gets hit with the right hand with her shoulder, doing the Mayweather shoulder roll, didn't work. And then a furious exchange in the end of the round. And watch a left hook coming from uh, Gabriel's. Shields a little wild, a little wide with those shots. Perhaps not picking her punches as much as John David Jackson would want, but you see she landed a big right hand and another right hand and did win that exchange. We come to round seven. Teresa Shields was dropped in the first round, but has, at least through our eyes, has taken control of this fight. Oh, yeah, she's back in control. And you see Gabriel's, you know, is making a mistake of backing up straight in the last round. She was almost had her out. She backed up straight. Gabriel's backed up straight, and she was really getting hit with big power shots. I just noticed Christina Hammer over there watching the fight. I wonder what she's thinking. <laughs> I wonder. And another exchange here, both getting their good right hand from Shields. Gabriel's fighting like if she's gonna go out, she's gonna go out in a shield. Good right hand again by Shields. Gabriel's still right there. Gabriel's only chance is to land the big power shot, and I wonder if these exchanges, while dominated by Shields, she shouldn't back off a little bit, box a little bit more. Good left hand slipped in by Shields in that last exchange. She's got her mouth open. I wonder which one of them. I mean, they're both swinging. One of them is going to punch herself out. Yeah. I, I think they're both yeah, Yes, this, honestly. But Shields has something to give her energy that Gabriel's doesn't, and that's the crowd. Yes. The chanting T-Rex. Right hand, but a little more slapping involved in that from Gabriel. Well, I think not just the crowd, Steve, but I think, you know, she feels that, you know, she's got a lot of pride and she feels like she carries women's boxing. And then Shields in control of things. Spectator with her trainer. And Christina Hammer's probably saying to herself, Yeah, this is a pretty ent entertaining action fight, but I don't fight like Hannah yeah. Gabriels. I fight a whole different style. So whatever Clarissa Shields is doing isn't going to work against me. Look at these exchanges toward the end of the round here. Again, Shields a little more pinpoint with her shots, but again, fighting off the ropes. And I just don't think, with a, a presumed lead on points, I don't know that she needs these big exchanges. Left hook there by Gabriel. Does she have one more punch in her to make this interesting? I don't know. Okay, we'll I think they're both tired. Okay, that's working good. Eight. Round number eight. Round one, Shields was not only dropped, but outpunched more connects for Gabriel than Shields. That had never happened to Clarissa Shields as a pro. But in every round since, she's outpunched and outlanded Gabriel. See, these kind of moments where not much is happening, I think that's, that's a huge advantage for Shields. I agree. The only way she's going to lose this fight is to get caught. Good right hand by Shields. Watch headbutt. your hands, watch your hands. Another headbutt, yeah. Gabriel's a shorter, and you know, she comes in with her head. I think this is a very good fight for Shields. It's a good fight to have. I oh, think. yeah. I'm going to learn a lot from this fight. You know, she's fighting a champion who's fighting with a champion's mentality, meaning yeah. that when things aren't going right, she's still trying to win. She just don't know if she has enough energy to win at this point, Gabrielle. But look who's coming forward. 
Work out game. She's work tough. Out work. Stop. Step back. Let her go. Box. She's, like, she's still making shields work. She's not making it easy for her. She's got her thinking. She can't take no rounds off. And a good on the left hand from Shields. And those are not wild punches. Yeah, short and compact with that hook. Good left hand lifted again by Gabriels. Kind of just to keep her honest. Good round. Thank you. Good round for him. Good round. The body work was nice. And, her, and you see that in hook every time. You're going to see the headbutt right here. They were both coming in. Shields recoils. She's got to be careful to keep her hands up there, though, when she's complaining oh, to the ref. Oh, the one that came down. Okay. Tranquila. Congratulations. Finish with the hook for me. Okay? That's a good round for you. Kill her right next jab. All you're trying to do is bait you in now. Every now and then, give her a little faint. Very good round for you. Here we go. Good round. Round nine. Gabriel's still trying. Shields, Go ahead. Shields has been 10 once. Gabriel's been 10 or more four times. Well, Shields needs them rounds. She's going to fight with Steven Hammer. And again, a good exchange, and Gabriel's still really trying, but finishing second. A left hand from Shields and a right behind it. Two jabs in the right hand. We talked a lot about how size would impact this fight with Shields coming down and weight and Gabriel's going up. I don't think it's, I think Shields is right when she said to me, I don't think it's going to impact the fight that much. Shields hasn't hurt Gabriel, maybe hurt her once or twice. It hasn't been an inside fight. Yeah. It's been an action fight. Oh, yeah. From the opening bell. Right hand from Shields again. Gabriel's is still there. And right hand again from Shields. Shields is thinking, what do I have to hit her with? Well, it was like that with Tori Nelson. Sometimes you question her power. Yeah. Oh. And we should point out, Gabriel's in her one loss was stopped in the second round by Xavier Castillo. And was down in the second fight. Yes. Keep telling him to throw downstairs and then up. That's her husband. Last round. Let's hear it, Detroit. This is the 10th and final round in your main event. So 10th round, the crowd loves it. It's been an action fight. Sure has. Gabriel's landed more punches against Shields than any of Shields of previous opponents. 117 punches landed, that's a lot.
Shields seems to me to be in excellent shape coming into this fight. And you can see just a few, a little nuance of things that John David Jackson has worked with her on. I think her punches, by and large, are a little straighter than they have been. Still tends to be a little wild on occasion. Both got there. Some good exchanges. Yeah. She was uh, winning them exchanges. Keeping her hands up right there. Yet a combination by Shield starting to the body, body. coming upstairs. She's doing some pretty good body work. Shields peppering her, and every time she does, Gabriel comes back. Watch your head, Hannah. Watch your head. She's tough. That time, Gabriel's time. held after. Uh, we got a cut. Accidental headbutt. Somebody's got a Come cut in. now. Yeah. Fox. That toe. Don't what? matter anymore. 30 seconds yeah. after the fight. <laughs> cut maybe on Shields on the cheek. Yeah, left cheek. And it's going to end. Kind of wow. the way it started with a battle. Hey, Gabriel fought all the way through. Yeah, yeah. got to give it to her. Absolutely, she did. A great test for Clarissa Shields. We all feel she's done enough to win the fight, but a heck of a test for her. Being all tested, the way to the end. Being tested far more than she ever was. Clarissa Shields got dropped. She got cut. Dropped in the first round, cut in the last round. Yeah. Pushed the whole way. She got headbutted a bunch of times. Yeah. All that's a, it's a part of learning and you know getting better. Absolutely, a of, absolutely. A lot of fighters can't deal with that. You get cut, you get headbutted, that's, you get dropped. I think that's what's to be learned out of this. I think I, I think you can make a case for this is by far her best performance. Despite being knocked out. Because of the quality yes. of the opposition. Yes. And she had to deal with, with as you said, deal with adversity. First time. Well, now the scoreboard's clean, and you know what everybody's going to be talking about. That's right. The possibility, at least, of a matchup between, assuming Christina, excuse, excuse me, assuming Clarissa Shields wins this, has won this fight, which I think is a given. Fair assumption. If Hammer and Shields, if that fight is made, they'll be fighting for all four middleweight. And, yeah, and it really makes me look forward to that fight, yeah. assuming it happens. And does Nelson fight Gabriel now? Why not? <laughs> hey, I, I pay to see Gabriel's anytime. I, I think that'll be a head-on collision between both of the fighters. Uh, terrific. Nelson and, and Gabriel, yeah. Round one was a shocker here. We talk about Clarissa Shields overcoming adversity. This is what she had to overcome. They exchanged, and out of nowhere, Gabriel's lands a right uppercut, left hook combo, drops Shields, first knockdown of Shields' career. But from that point on, when they exchanged, Shields almost always got the better of it. Gabriel's remained in the fight, remained dangerous. But there you see Shields landing at the right distance. Interestingly, the bigger woman, she did, did not have a reach advantage in this fight. Halfway marker was more of the same. Can't really say that Gabriels was ever in danger of getting stopped. And then in spurts, as you see here when they would trade, Gabriels remained dangerous, had enough energy to trade with Clarissa Shields, but did not do enough to win the round. That was a heck of a night of boxing, I'll tell you. I think both women, uh, both yeah, assuming again that Clarissa Shields wins this fight, she and Christina Hammer, both were very impressive. That was the last cut from the headbutt that you can see on the cheek of Clarissa Shields. Here's how it happened. Yeah, this is the last minute of the 10th round right there. Oh. Gabriels was against the ropes, came forward. Her arms were down, but her head was up. All right, so let's find out the, how the judges saw this one. We go to the center of the ring once more, and our ring announcer, Pete Trevino. Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for both of the fighters in this ring. After 10 championship rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision.
Judge Procopio scores the contest 97 to 92. Judge Ancona scores the contest 98 to 91. And Judge Hayes scores the contest 97 to 92. All for your winner by unanimous decision and new WBA and IBF female middleweight champion of the world, Clarissa T. Rex Shields. Well, there is your winner, Clarissa Shields, and she had to dig down to earn this victory. Dropped for the first time in her career on a dazzling uppercut by Hannah Gabriels in the very first round. She had to fight back. Gabriels had no quit in her whatsoever. Stayed on top of her from about the third round to the end. It was Shields that won most of the exchanges. And I, again, I really do feel that we've now seen her in four of her six professional fights. I was more impressed with her in this fight than any other, despite the fact that she did get dropped and really had to dig down to win it. It was not an easy victory for her, but she fought a very tough person in front of her, and that's what makes me impressed with Clarissa Shields. Now, of course, the road is open, and we'll find out what she has to say about it as we go to Steve Farhood with Clarissa Shields. Uh, first, we're gonna talk to Hannah Gabriels. You scored a knockdown in the first round. Did that change your mentality in the fight? Did you try for a knockout after that? Or how did that affect your, your thinking? No, 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 it didn't affect me at all. First of all, thank you everybody for coming. You've been great. And then um, I, it, didn't, it didn't change my mind at all. I kept working. She's very fast and she does have a lot of power. You know, I'm a smaller kid and I probably feel it more. But um, it was a great fight. I don't think the difference was that big, but you have to trust the judges in this game. And then uh, I'll accept my my loss with dignity, and I stayed all. I did my, I gave my all. You have certainly fought like a champion. How would you rate Clarissa Shields' power? Oh, she's powerful. Um, I think I uh, probably landed more punches or the same, I don't know. But um, like I said, I'm not gonna make excuses. She's got the win today. I'm still a 154 champion. And, you know, you have to stay tall. This is a fight between champions. For the fans, I don't think it went wrong at all. It was an excellent fight, and we look forward to seeing you again. You are a true champion. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody. Clarissa Shields, the Durrell brothers here congratulating you. Hannah Gabriel's congratulating you. You said to us before the fight, this was going to be your toughest fight. You sensed yeah. that. Now that you've been through the fight, Describe the fight to us. Describe Hannah Gabriels as an opponent. Well, for her to come up from 54, I see why she beat all the girls that's smaller than her. She's strong. Um, she caught me with a shot in the first round. And uh, that's when I knew I said, okay. She just want to uh, move and like, I, and, like I said, catch me off balance and then land a big shot. After she went with the big shot, I was thinking to myself, you still got it. Make sure you go out there, be smart. Use your jab, move your head, and uh, tire her out. I seen the sixth round, she started getting tired. I fought her some more. But you know, she had some heart, and she fought her ass off, and she showed that she was a champion. But overall, like I said, I'm the greatest woman of all time. I can get put on my ass, get back up, fight 10 rounds, and win. I'm sure you knew how you would respond in adversity, but this was really the first fight in which you had adversity in that first round. That knockdown pretty much came out of nowhere, yeah. yet you won every round after that. Every round. How did you do that? I'm telling you, my mind, I could tell you the whole fight, round by round. I could tell you what I got hit with, probably what the second was on the bill. I was like, either way it goes, tonight is my night. I'm going to make history. I got to show the world why I'm the greatest woman of all time. And like I said, I may have got put on my ass, but it wasn't over. She tried to get me up. She tried to get me out second round and third round. I won every round after the knockdown. And uh, I showed who I am. I showed that any, now I'm really dangerous because they know they could knock me down, and I'm going to get back up, and I'm, and, and I'm going to fight harder. I'm in shape. I did what I was supposed to do. The obvious question, the question everybody asks, she's here, she fought on this What's card. That? It's Christina Hammer Call next. Call in the ring now. Right here, behind. Hammer, i whoop your ass. Hold on, hold on. I'll whoop your ass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Save it. All right, I 
think that speaks for itself, Barry. We'll go back to you. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. And a very nifty move, I might add, Steve, to get away from that scintillating right hook. And, and let me say this as Raul Marquez joins me here. I think Steve is the greatest announcer of all time. I, I, I was trying to go up there and protect Steve. You know, we're, we're a team. It's my job to look out for both of you guys. You were ready. I mean, a lot of emotion going on right now. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean. And, and you know, Christina Hammer, she had, she's had a chance to kind of take a blow. And she, she already and she, showered and cleaned up. Clarissa Shields still she's pretty hot. She's still hot. And Christina kind of knows how to get under her skin. That's what happened. Like you said, Shields just finished fighting. She's still heated up. She's probably not 100% satisfied with her performance. I mean, she got the win. You know, one thing first, you know, she dealt with a lot of adversity. Everybody saw she got dropped in the first round. That was shocking. She didn't expect that. But what I did like about her, Barry, she got back up and took her time. I expected her to go wild and crazy and try to knock, knock her opponent out, Gabriel's. But no, she took her time. She regained her thoughts, put her thoughts together, established her jab, and she started winning rounds. She also got cut. She also got headbutted. And, uh, you know, she went 10 really tough rounds for only their second time in her career. With Nelson, she went 10 rounds, but everything went her way. This fight, she couldn't take any rounds off. She had to keep thinking every round. And that kind of fight is going to help her for the Christina Hammer fight. But Christina Hammer is a total different style. She's not going to stand in front of her like Gabriel's did. So I'm looking forward to this fight. Yeah, I think I think we all are. Let me turn to Steve Farad here for a moment. And uh, and as we said, I, I was more impressed with Clarissa tonight <laughs> than I have been in any of the other fights. And that was because of the caliber of opponent that she fought. That said, I was extremely impressed with Christina Hammer. I can't wait for this fight to happen. You can't wait. And part of the reason is, you know, we project when we see two fighters who are going to fight each other next. We hope that is the case. You can't project much off of this because Hannah Gabriels and Christina Hammer have totally different styles and will present different problems to Clarissa Shields. So in that sense, there's not that much to learn, although we learned a lot about Clarissa Shields coming off the floor. Obviously, the cut, not much of a factor. But uh, I think if they were trying to sell the fight, Barry, they could have done so without having me as, at, at their expense. Yeah, I don't think you needed to be the fall guy, almost literally in that case. But Where it was, was Raul when I needed him? He was there for you. He was there for you. He was standing next to me saying, boy, I hope Steve does okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a fight. You know, I think back to Leila Ali and Ann Wolf. They never fought each other. They were 168 pounders. These women will be 160. I think the fight will happen. It makes sense for it to happen. And uh, they didn't even need that little exchange in the ring at the end of the fight. It wasn't necessary. And uh, I think people will want to see that fight regardless. That's what I think, too. I mean, it is the cliche that styles make fights. Yeah. I think those two styles should make for a great fight. What a night of boxing it's been.